We're live. So, <clears throat> welcome to a new week, everybody. I know it's Tuesday for everybody, but I usually do all my house chores on Mondays now, so Mondays are a little bit busier for me. And I had to get up and go somewhere, so I did my makeup. <laughs> so it's video time, obviously. <sighs> Today, I want to talk about family specifically who is family and I feel like this is a big thing to talk about because there's a lot of things going on right now that makes people question this in different ways more specifically things like LGBTQ communities being kicked out of their homes because their family won't accept them people who have differing political opinions threatening people to get kicked out because they don't agree and different things like that that are causing sorts of rifts in family or what we know as family but I've always been of the opinion that family is more than the people who you're born with like your mom and dad the people are who you know birthed you your cousins their family and people who are related to you by blood. Now, this is not to say that that's not your family. It's just, I, I've always felt like it's more than that. For example, um, most of the women, actually, I think all of the women who were in my bridal group for my wedding, all of my bridesmaids and my maid of honor, I consider them all family because we've been together for so long we know each other, I trust them, I know that they can, you know, I can count on them if something happens, and I'd hope that they know that they can count on me if they ever need me. And I consider them my family. I know even one of them is constantly over at my parents' house, like with my sister, because they're also friends, and they're staying there, and they've always said, you know, doors open if you ever need to come here for any reason. And to me, that's family. Now, I've been really fortunate in my life that the people who are my blood family are also people who I consider family because we look out for each other. Now, we don't always get along <laughs> and we've all had our disagreements and like arguments and biting and all of that stuff, but we're family and we've always gotten along and we know that at the end of the day, we've got each other's backs. I know in high school, like, rough as high school is, I had several cousins who were in high school with me and we would always look out for each other. Um, one of my cousins was always like, I've got your back in case you ever need another one. My cousins would always question why I wasn't in class, which it was always the beginning of the year and my schedule was always messed up and I had a free period, but that's not the point. The point is that we had each other's backs. However, there are some people who aren't as lucky, who have family, who aren't that way, who you know, bring them down in self-esteem, who don't support them in different things, who, if they disagree on things, say it's my way or the highway and actually mean it and kick kids out of their home because they're on a path that they can't support or condone. And this is what that's about. And this is what this video is about because to those people, it can feel really frustrating when people tell you, you know, oh, well, they're still your family. You still have to care about them. And I don't feel like those are your family, if that's how they're going to treat you. I remember when I was younger, I don't know what brought it up, but I remember telling my mom that if anything ever happened between my parents, whoever was the person who caused it, whatever, I wouldn't talk to. Because I always felt that, you know, if you care about someone, you work something out. And I don't know. It was a weird thing that I thought about when I was little that I thought made a lot of sense. But that's not the point. I've always felt that if somebody in your blood family is not treating you like family, then they're not family. And I say this to all the kids who've always been, who've been adopted, who are in the foster system, or even kids who got kicked out of their home or just don't talk to their family anymore because they're not good for them for whatever reason. 
And I know this can be really controversial because I know a lot of adults and other people who will say things like, oh, well, that's, no, you shouldn't say that. They're still family. You still have to go talk. No, you shouldn't have to go talk to somebody who's bad for you. I know a few people who don't talk to their biological family because that's not who their family is. My husband was adopted and he does not talk to his biological family because there was a reason he went into foster care and he doesn't want to be involved with them anymore and he has every right to be and all of these kids who you know oh well they get a chance to talk to their family again or their family says they've changed and they want to reach out and they don't want to have anything to do with them you shouldn't force them to because they're hurting the same way that we tell kids like hey, if a kid is mean to you, you know, you can forgive them, but you don't have to forget what they've done. That should still apply to family members because they hurt you. If anything, they'd hurt you worse because these are the people who are supposed to have your back. These are the people who are supposed to be taking care of you, and they're not. And that hurts. I know it's taken me some time to forgive some of my family who've hurt me before, intentionally or otherwise. And eventually I'll get over it because I know some of them, it's not, it wasn't their intention. Other people, there was things going on. There was circumstances and I made the choice to forgive them. But not everybody else can deal as easily. Not everybody else had things that were as for forgivable. And we have to start acting like it. Now that's one half of this. The other half of this is you'll find new family. The same way I mentioned that my all of my bridesmaids who weren't biologically related to me, they're my family. I know that I can count on them. I know that I can go to them if I ever need help. And that's what family should be. So for all of those people who feel like their biological family is failing them for whatever reason, you will find new family. And a lot of you might already have some. Some of you might not and you're looking for them. They're out there. They're gonna be these people who you meet, who know you as you are, and will just accept you, because that's what family should do. No, it doesn't mean you always agree. Heavens knows that me and my family argue all the time because we don't always agree. The amount of times that we've gotten into it at the dinner table and my mom just like loses it and she hates arguing is ridiculous. But we know that at the end of the day, we've had each other's back. And you'll find that in somebody. My husband and I, we're our own family now. But I always, I counted on him before we got married. And that's part of why I agreed to marry him. Because I knew that he was going to be a great man. And he was going to take care of me. And I could take care of him. And we were going to count on each other. When I meet new people, that's kind of the standards that I hold up. I want to be able to count on them. I want to be able to you know, get along with them. If we set a date, I want to know that we're going to get there. You know, it's not just going to be canceled. And all of these things, because that's kind of the relationships I like to build. I like to build relationships that are family. Because especially in a world with so much hate and so much confusion and arguing and everything, I feel like we need more connections to people. You never know when that person that you met who's a friend doesn't go anywhere on the holidays because they were disowned or they don't have anywhere to go or they don't want to go home because it's just as bad. Maybe you are their family. And because of those things, I like to try to have events like Friendsgiving and this year we had a New Year's party where we had our friends over and we talked and we hung out and we spent the holiday together. And those things are the things that mean things to me because I know I have people that I worked hard to surround myself with and I want them to know that if anything happens, they know that they can count on me. Because let's be honest, not everybody's gonna tell you what their personal struggles are especially with all of these people coming out to their families and then they're just denying it or telling them, you know, quit that or you're going to get kicked out or 
I don't agree with you and therefore you can't live under my roof. I think the biggest thing that my parents told me when I was younger was I had to follow their roles and all of it was simply, you know, we got to know where you're going, we got to know who you're with, you know, you got to do your part around the house. It was never about who I was supposed to be or what I believed in. It was some of just the basic things. And I feel like that's the biggest difference. Your family isn't somebody who's going to force you to be somebody or not. They are going to try to help make you a better person. My parents, as I've mentioned, were all Catholic. And so they took us to church. And when we got older and we moved out, it was a personal decision. They're not going to disown us if we don't go anymore. But they are going to continue to try to tell us to go if we don't. Because they want us to be better people and they feel like that's part of it. But they're not disowning us over it. They're not, you know, making a big deal, telling us bad things about it. They just, they're trying to help and be supportive. And we still meet for holidays and all of that stuff. It's, this is not a long topic, so I'm kind of running out of steam. But just the point of it was, I feel like there's still a lot of people trying to convince you to talk to family who's not good for you or people who are trying to get you to spend time with people because they're family. And this also applies for when you have extended family. All of my in-laws are now my family. And when we have kids, that is going to be their family. His parents are going to be their grandparents and all of his siblings are going to be their aunts and uncles and all of his family is going to be their family. And we need to think about those things. Sometimes we have disagreements and it's, if it's going to be okay, then, you know, it's fine. It's the same thing with my family. We don't always agree and it's going to be okay. But you got to learn where you're going to draw your lines, especially when you have kids, because this is the stuff that we have to teach them to. Family, yes, is the people who you were born into, the people that you're blood related to, but it's more than that. And if they don't feel comfortable, they don't feel safe, they don't feel loved above all else in their family, they don't have to be there. And it's really hard for me to say those things because as much as I like would love for everybody to get along and I want everybody to be amazing and friendly and I'm very idealistic, <laughs> that's not always the reality. And Especially when you get married, like, you're thrust into a whole new family of people who you agree with or you don't agree with. They're your family now. And you have to figure out how to make it work. But you don't have to force it to work. And that's something that I'm trying to learn because, you know, his family and I don't see eye to eye on a lot of issues. But I'm trying to figure out where we do agree. And even though we don't always agree, our relationship is getting better and we're getting to know each other better. And I'm starting to figure out where my place is here and how I feel about these relationships. And I hope that everything works out because again, I'm the idealist. I'm going to hope and pray every single day that it gets better and suddenly I wake up and everything's perfect. But that's just me. When we have kids, I have to make sure that every relationship that we bring them into is going to be a good one so that they learn what to expect from family and no that doesn't mean that I'm just going to hide them away and I'm not going to show them to anybody it just means that I have to be aware of it I have a friend whose biological father is getting out of prison and she's got kids and she doesn't want them to have anything to do with each other because she doesn't think that's going to be a good relationship. And she can change her mind or she can keep it that way, but she's right. She's trying to make sure that only good, healthy relationships are there with her kids. And we all have to learn to do that. Not just when we have kids, if we have kids, but for ourselves. A lot of the times we feel like, oh, well, it's just me and I can put up with it. It doesn't mean it's good for you. Imagine if you had a family who was constantly telling you that there was something wrong with you. 
that you are not okay, would you keep trying to see them? I wouldn't. It's hard enough <laughs> on my own to try to tell myself that I'm worth it. You know, and that's because I don't have a bunch of people whispering in my ear like that. We have to be selective of the relationships to make sure that they're being positive for us. And yeah, I know, in posting this, it's going to get weird. Not everybody's going to agree with me. I'm sure there's going to be some arguments for the contrary. But I really do think that family has to be people who love you and accept you as you are. No, you don't have to always agree. It doesn't have to always be peaceful. But there has to be that understanding that you are loved and you are cared for above all else. Thanks for listening.